In this video, I'm gonna share the top five programming project ideas to get a job now. I'm also gonna share the worst programming project idea that every single student does. Trust me, you might have even done this project already. The first programming project idea is, wait, this isn't good enough. I need more input. Got it. I'm going to pack my bags, fly to Dubai, rip Internet Made Coder out of his goddamn comfy bed, and make him give some ideas too. Wait, what was the question? Programming projects. Especially if you're more of a beginner, a good place to start is with something that you can finish in even a weekend, but it's still gonna be interesting and it's even gonna help you in your real life. And one thing that I talk about a lot is Python automation scripts. Essentially automate your life. One example is a script to clean up your desktop automatically. Have a script running at all times so that whenever you download a file, instead of it going into your downloads folder, it's automatically going to be sent to the appropriate folders depending on the file type. You know. Another example is a Python script to automate your Google Calendar. Set a script to track the time that you spend programming and it will automatically create events into your Google Calendar. So I recommend you just pick a task that you would like to automate on your computer and figure out a way to automate it using Python. Still not good enough. I'll call tech with Tim. Tim, come to Domus's. Yo, what's going on? Hey man. So one of my favorite project ideas is to do something that integrates with hardware. I always had fun kind of working with robotic, Raspberry Pis, do something with the Internet of Things where you're actually interacting with real world sensors. A project I built was a script that automatically preheated my coffee maker every morning 10 minutes before I was going to wake up. So right when I walked downstairs, I had instant coffee. Another cool one that I did was essentially a facial recognition script that was running on my Raspberry Pi that allowed me to determine who was walked through the hallway in my house and I could see who was coming up to my my door, it would give me a notification. It's kind of a Raspberry Pi security system of sorts. So the number one worst website idea of all time is a portfolio website. Now hear me out. You should have a portfolio website, but you shouldn't build it as a side project. Now on the surface, it seems like a great idea. I need a website to show off my work. Why don't I build it? The problem with trying to make your own portfolio website is that you end up spending more than half the time just designing it. And then we come up with a bad design, which reflects poorly on us. It actually hurts us in the application process. Then you'll spend your other half of the time trying to fix annoying HTML, CSS bugs that you're not even gonna need on the job most of the time. People get caught up in this and they don't even end up finishing the portfolio website. The solution is web hosting. I actually partnered with Hostinger for this video so that I could show you how to build a kick-ass portfolio website. Okay, now I logged in here to Hostinger. Let's go ahead and get our free domain. I'm gonna put my full name, Jason Levi Goodison, my full name. Claim that domain. Now get a .com because people have like an inherent bias for .com. It just looks more legitimate. Not .me, not .io, get .com. Fill out your information. Obviously mine's blurred here. And bang, look at that. Immediately I have a cool domain .com. I'm already halfway into looking legitimate. Let's build our first website. I recommend going with the business plan for a few reasons. The first is obviously the free domain, which you're gonna need. The second is it's optimized for WordPress. The third would be the free email. Everybody else is gonna be emailing from their school account. So if you can email from your own private domain, that just makes you look way more legit. Another is unlimited SSL cert. So if you see that little lock icon next to the URL. That's an SSL cert. You don't have one of those. Your website looks honestly looks sketchy, but it's surprisingly hard to get one of these when you're coding your own website. You have to go through the whole flow, of buying it, setting up the DNS records correctly. Something's going to go wrong. It's just way easier to use hostingers. Add coupon code JASON10. Apply. Sweet. And I'm going to get it for 48 months because I know that I'm going to need this indefinitely. All right. So I purchased it. Now let's set up our first website. Building it myself. Sure. I need help. At least that's what my ex says. AI website builder? I didn't even know they had this. Um, a cool, sleek website that displays coding projects. Create website. While this is building, stick around for the last two tips because honestly, those are the best ones. Website is ready already. Wow. Welcome to my portfolio. Project one, project two, project three. Wow. Oh, I like this vibe a lot, actually. About me. Get in touch. This is pretty much everything I need, right? It's not perfect, so I'll go ahead and change it exactly how I like to. It'll take me 10 minutes. 
So let's go through the website really quickly. First, I put a banner. All of the logo splashes I think will grab people's attention. Y Combinator, Waterloo, Microsoft. If you have any logos, put them on. Only if they'll make you look more legitimate. Scroll down, I put a bit of personality. I put a picture of myself. Completely AI generated headshot. I've never gotten a good photo taken of me in my entire life. Scroll down even more, I have my portfolio. I describe them in a human-like way. I describe the impact, like who's actually using the projects. I put good images that I spent a long time taking and this looks pretty legitimate. So I'm gonna click go live and there you go. Go to jasonlevigoodison.com. You can check out my portfolio website. This is the display of you to an employer. You want it to look ultra premium, ultra legitimate. So spend time on it and maybe even ask some design friends to help you with the design elements. And because you're not coding it, it'll take 10 minutes to do. A project that every single programmer should have in their repertoire is a full stack application. And the purpose of this is to understand the front end and the back end, and specifically how these two communicate. Ideally, you'll also have database and interact with some kind of API. A great example of this is a personal finance tracking app. Actually allow you to connect your bank account into the application to allow you to track your finances. You can even write things to interact with CSV files to interact with your transactions. The stack that I recommend myself is Django for the back end because it's really fast. On the front end, I recommend React. But if a personal finance app is not interesting to you, another example is a simple e-commerce application. It's a bit more simple, but it's going to give you a lot of good practice with some of the basics like user authentication, React state, interacting with databases, and a bunch of other things. The next type of project I typically recommend to people is something to do with game development. So a lot of the games that I built, stuff like Tetris, Pac-Man, even something like Tic-Tac-Toe can be a great project. However, if you want to do something a little bit more complicated, try to do something that involves physics simulation. So when I did recently, on my channel was a planet simulation that was pretty cool but another more complicated one i did was actually a mini golf game what you did is you kind of hit a ball with a different amount of power and i used projectile motion to actually get the ball to kind of go up and down and using gravity and bouncing all of that kind of stuff i built into the app so if you can make a game go ahead and try that out so all of those projects run the gambit from beginner to more advanced but all i care about for the fifth project idea is that people are actually using it so now that i'm starting to hire for my startup first thing i do when i see a project is see is is this a real project? Do people actually use this? Is it helping people's life? I loved Tim's example of having something make him coffee every morning because that's something that he uses. If you could build a project that 10 people are using, 100 people are using, 1,000 people are using, then when it comes to technical stuff, I'm probably not going to have to interview you as heavily because I know that you can build things that people actually want. Anybody can learn to code, but are you a problem solver? That's what I want to see in your projects. So the project I did that hit this requirement is I was a poor college student and I lost access to Spotify. So instead of paying for Spotify, I wrote a script that scraped all of my songs from Spotify, searched them on YouTube, got the URL, and then used a library to download the MP3, which I then uploaded onto my phone. Although it is slightly illegal, I think, a few people in interviews called it out as like a really interesting project and we talked about it and bonded over it. So essentially there are two ways that you could build a project. Either you're just trying to learn a specific skill, which is what Thomas and Tim have talked about today, or you could be trying to set yourself apart. And I think that once you've gotten the basics down, building a project that real people are using that solves a real problem, that's the way to do it. That's the way to set yourself apart from all of the other students. Hey dude, hey man. Oh, <laughs> 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 